Welcome back, everybody, for the second session of the day uh, uh, of the conference track of Hacker Working. I'm really excited about the upcoming talk uh, where we are going to discuss opportunities that got born out of COVID-19. Uh, just before we were in Singapore, we are going to make our way uh, right here, right now uh, to Tokyo to meet uh, Natalia Davidova, who is the branding director uh, for Gaiax. Natalia, are you here? Yes. Hi, Pauline. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good, good. How are you? Very good. I was going to say good morning, but I think it's uh, past morning for you now. <laughs> yes, it's five o'clock already. <laughs> Um, I'm really happy to uh, see you again because we, we met at the beginning of, uh, of the year and it was a very different uh, context. Yeah. Uh, it's even kind of crazy to think about it uh, in just a short time of everything that happens. Um, that's, that's quite interesting. Um, so can we, um, just in order for the viewers to understand what we are going to talk about, um, can you tell us a little bit about what Gaiax is exactly? Um, so I work for Gaiax. Gaiax is a Japanese IT company uh, that operates as a product studio uh, committed towards developing innovative community solutions in order to tackle social issues. So under our mission of empowering the people to connect, we develop social media solutions and sharing economy platforms. And what's your role in all of this? Uh, uh, how, how also, I think, how did you end up um, in Gaiax? Oh, it's a really long story. <laughs> I work now as a sort of in charge of branding, corporate branding. So it, it's like a creative director for all the things corporate. <laughs> I joined <laughs> 20 years ago as an engineer. Then I turned to design. And since then, for 15 years, worked as a creative director, graphic designer, web designer, animator, video creator, all sorts of things creative. Uh, now, and uh, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, sorry, sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Um, no, I was gonna say that uh, last time we we spoke, um, you were talking to us about the the uh, work culture uh, that Gaiax has, and I think it's it's a uh, it's really innovative actually. So, can you talk to us about it? Yes. So Gaiax is working under principles of teal organization. We have the complete freedom of where, how, and when to work what projects to participate in and in what way. The company is also very committed to the uh, well-being of its members, creative, uh, creating various programs, services, and facilities for its people to pursue a more well-balanced life. For example, we have playroom for kids, we have uh, yoga and meditation facilities, childcare leave support for fathers. Uh, we also offer family support to single sex partnerships. Uh, we employ people with cognitive disabilities, we offer remote work support and also pay for the educational courses. Um, half of our, well not half, but many of our employees decided that the Netherlands is the better working environment. <laughs> and so, so they just decided to move there and that's okay as well. <laughs> so it means that they do everything fully remote? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's that's amazing. And when you say they have the freedom to work on any projects, uh, if I remember from our conversation, it's not just in Gaiax, they can work for anyone else, right? Yes, uh, actually the company encourages multi-employment. It encourages employees to sort of develop skills and then sell those skills, offer those skills to not just Gaiax, but any other company. So, and, <laughs> and um, educational uh, resources, like if you want to learn French and then go work for a French company, we're going to pay for that. <laughs> Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, and I know that uh, Gaiax also operate a building in Tokyo, which is called uh, Nagatacho Grid. Uh, what was the idea behind uh, and when did you start it? Um, uh, well, since Gaiax was in the, is in the sharing business, uh, alongside our endeavors of finding ways to connect people and have them benefit from that collective resources, we have built uh, our new office or headquarters as a community building where people from various backgrounds can gather and sort of inspire each other and act together. So we, we've um, found this old building in the heart of Tokyo in Nagatacho and we renovated it in 2017. So this is our um, fourth year, I guess now. Oh, wow, nice. Um, yeah, so in 
this community building that we created, uh, we have two sharing models. One is we have shared offices and event spaces that we share for profit. And then we also have workspaces and lounges that we share for free. Anyone can join at any time. And it is truly completely free, including services like free coffee, fast Wi-Fi, free displays, whiteboards, and so on. So basically, we invite people to come and work at our own office. We share our own workplace and with like really cool strangers. Like I myself never know who's going to be sitting next to me. <laughs> and uh, so uh, go for it. Sorry. I wanted to add that the for profit model pays for the free model. So the building is completely sustainable and the free model allows Gaiax to grow its community of passionate and purpose-driven people that have the potential of joining GAIAX projects and in return scale as businesses. Um, I was uh, gonna share, if you don't mind, a few thoughts. Yeah, please, please. Actually, we always say an image is worth, is worth a thousand words. So I would love for the viewers to experience it too. Um, you can share your screen and I'll tell you when, when we see it. Okay. Um, Just a sec. And yeah, now we see it. Okay, so this is great. It's a six story building uh, that also includes basement and the rooftop. And this is Gaiax, this is us. Wait, I think it's stuck on the uh, slide that says six essential features. Oh no. Oh. Um, Let me stop sharing and try again. Yeah. And then. I'll try again. Yeah, I'll just let you know when uh, when we can see it. It's loading. Yes, now we see it. Okay. Um, I wonder if the problem was uh, that I shared it in full screen. So maybe I'll just scroll the slides this way. Would that yeah. be okay? Okay. Of course, yeah. <laughs> so this is great, and this is us. And uh, when mm -hmm. we created GRID, we thought of two main concepts, which is multifunctionality and well-being. So um, this is basically um, how it looks like. Every floor has its own role. Uh, we have two main event spaces. Uh, we have a couple of co-working spaces. One is for members, one is free. Uh, we have shared offices and two restaurants. And this is the six essential features um, that GRID represents. Every floor at GRID looks like a living room. It is filled with uh, home furniture, lots of natural light, books, sofas. <laughs> 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 this is basically, I don't know who these people are. They just come and work at our office. <laughs> Um, so every floor has kitchen facilities and we offer um, community lunches, we invite, um, so this is our community lunches, somebody is cooking something. We invite food entrepreneurs who come to greet and sell their artisan coffee, tea, um, cupcakes. <laughs> uh, we also work with NPOs uh, that work with uh, people with disabilities. They come to greet mm -hmm. and sell um, muffins, cupcakes, bread, that sort of thing. It's really popular. Um, GRID is also filled with art. We collaborate with lots of artists. Um, basically, we provide sort of free gallery space for artists mm -hmm. just use to display the art. Uh, each um, painting or art comes with QR code where people can just read it and purchase the um, artwork. Since GRID is public place, it's a great opportunity for artists to showcase their work. So we have lots of artists come and display their art at GRID. Uh, this is a community art project. Everyone basically can come from the street and paint whatever on this wall. Oh, nice. <laughs> and um, so we also provide lots of um, services like yoga, meditation, uh, sleeping facilities, a place where you can just relax and sort of breathe fresh air. Uh, or is this? Yes. I, I was just going to ask, is this open? open to everyone or is it only open to members of GAIAX um, or GRID? Everyone. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, multifunctionality was one of the main concepts for GRID. So, um, for example, event space, when there's no event, it is operated as a free lounge 
or free co-working space that can also uh, be a platform for like free services or events. We have, uh, for example, massage therapists come and, and, and create a massage parlor out of our event space. We have uh, color and aromatherapy specialists or acupuncture um, sensei come and, and provide their services. So yes, it's available to everyone. This is child facilities. We have kids room, we have um, nursing facilities. This is um, the aromatherapy that I mentioned earlier. Uh, we have um, Zen meditation in the morning. Mm, nice. Uh, in summer, we uh, create kids parties on the rooftop and uh, movie screenings as well. Uh, and uh, Grid is a platform for many, many events. We run events almost every day. Um, and this can be business related or just for fun. We have meeting circles, book parties, uh, events for kids, um, on uh, board game nights, talk events, and you know, all sorts of things. The, these two events are my particular favorites. Uh, you can uh, talk about your life through um, comics. Basically what you do is you draw comics to explain the most embarrassing moment of your life or <laughs> the problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a lot of fun. So yes, this is great. Um, you, you can check our homepage if you want to know more details. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's uh, I I mean we've been there twice and every time we go we just uh, love the the energy and it's uh, there are always so many uh, things happening and as you said it's uh, it's it's uh, just every day it seems like there is a new thing going on so. Uh, any viewers watching this, I really advise you to uh, put it on your list if you ever make your way to Tokyo or if you are uh, in Japan right now watching us. Um, I want to enter the core topic of our talk, which is uh, COVID-19. So um, what was the, the first thing you did as a team once uh, the Japanese government uh, declared state of emergency in, in Tokyo? Well, we started to seriously talk about it at the beginning of February uh, when we've put together a safety committee. Uh, we started to discuss changes in policy and what to do. So actually when the state of emergency was announced, we simply continued to do what was already put in place. So all of our employees were long working from home by then and GRID was closed to public. But mm -hmm. before that, we created a guideline how to keep grid safe and set, set up a daily routine of disinfecting uh, surfaces, offering face masks for free. Uh, we moved all of our events online and had only a few essential employees basically come to the office on a shift base to take care of like plants and mail mm -hmm. and things like that. And uh, you just mentioned a, a safety committee. That's a, a really interesting uh, idea. And I would love to understand if uh, this was existing uh, before COVID-19 or did you start it uh, because of it? And also, who is part of, of the safety committee? Um, so our safety committee existed before and it gathers basically only when a critical situation occurs. It consists of representatives from all guides divisions, as well as our, as, as well as our top leaders. For example, um, it gathered first in 2011 after the big earthquake. And then again, when we were um, working on our work style reform, and then again during big storm seasons and so on. So it gathered again this time during COVID-19 station. And um, so for, for coronavirus, you, you took the decision to shut it down uh, to the public, right? Like the space? Well, we, we at first tried the, um, to implement safety measures, like I said earlier, uh, disinfect everything, um, limit the number of people participating in events, um, uh, offering free masks. Um, but then, yes, we decided to close the building because the number of infected people was increasing. Yeah. We made that decision. And it, it's been like this since. Uh, we are planning to reopen, though, next week. Oh, nice. The exciting times are coming. Yeah. Um, so when the, how, the outbreak hit, um, when we were discussing before Disco, you, you said that you shifted um, most of your activities online. Um, did you have the tool for that already or what did you use? 
Well, we started to experiment with online streaming of our offline events in 2019. So some of our bigger and most popular events already had online participation in place. Um, back then we used uh, YouTube streaming to, for talk events and we used their chat system to communicate with online participants. But then with the COVID situation uh, happening, we discovered Zoom. So we started um, to use Zoom. Actually what we did, we had a few team members learn everything there is to learn about Zoom, uh, Rima, Discord, and then have them talk at a series of online events, online lectures, about how to actually run those online events while using these tools. And these lectures were, were all public and free. Anyone could join and learn. And then we had our um, community managers, communicators, to um, facilitate a couple of online events, then learn what is necessary, what is important to facilitate a successful online event, and then again, share that knowledge with the public. So- And, um, uh, oh, sorry. No, 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 go ahead. No, no, I'll just let you finish. Um, so basically um, what we did when the situation occurred is we moved a wide range of our offline events online. These are um, book clubs, uh, board game nights, talk, talk events, even movie nights. Um, oh, right wow. Now, we are testing a new event um, that talks about movies produced by Ghibli Studio. So we actually watch together some parts of the movie and then discuss what it means in terms of um, economy, what what the Ghibli animators meant by this scene and so on. It's actually quite nice. And so um, uh, we also right now, so most of our offline events went online and then we created new events that were targeting specifically people who were sort of stuck at home. So we created um, a daily community lunch. First, we do a stretch sort of yoga workout, then we, <laughs> we talk. And then when it's time to say goodbye, but people still want to communicate, we move that party to Remo, which is another tool. And then we have our uh, communicators, community managers to sort of facilitate the networking further. Um, so yeah and, and um when i mean it's really interesting and uh, for the people who don't know what remo is uh, i invite you to to tune in to the next session because uh, there's a i don't know if you know natalia but there is a, a japanese uh, co-working space community from the kansai region uh, they uh, they bundle up together they gather together and they created the online virtual co-working space with remo uh, mm -hmm. and they are sharing their members all together so he will show us live how remo works so it's uh, great that you are bringing it uh, bringing the topic uh, in the conversation here as well um when we prepared this conversation you you told me that covid 19 actually brought you guys uh, new business opportunities uh, can you talk about them Yes, uh, well, apart from the fact that our online events are now attracting participants, not only from Tokyo, but from all over Japan, and those bringing more revenue into the cell, we also have success in moving some of our offline businesses online. For example, uh, our experience sharing platform Tabitha now offers uh, meetups with real professional Japanese geisha. Um, and uh, People not just from Japan but from all over the world can actually play games online with real geisha, uh, talk wow. about culture, um, see them dance, see them perform music on shamisen or um, tea ceremony. Uh, it, this service is called Meet Geisha. Then we had a platform, um, already had before, a platform for celebrities to send personalized video messages to their fans. But this platform is now also offering a new service where fans can actually meet their idols online and drink together. Oh, wow, nice. It, it's online drinking parties um, <laughs> where celebrities sort of invite their fans to their homes, show where they live, show their childhood photo albums, um, drink together, talk about life. <laughs> um, so this service is called Minnomi. Then um, the Zoom lectures to the public that I mentioned uh, earlier, 
this actually got um, a lot of attention from press and thanks to this uh, sort of volunteer activity we got some serious players interested in us helping them run online events so now we have uh, we um, are developing right now a consulting service uh, as well as operational support to good businesses wishing to run festivals and events online also uh, maybe like press conferences and investor meetings online we had our own investor meetings uh, meeting online in march and it was quite successful then finally we are turning grid event spaces into youtube video recording studios and plan to sell them together with our operational support to the companies wishing to broadcast their events online and um, at last we have also noticed a shift in companies moving to shared spaces from their expensive rental offices so now we have two companies that moved into grid um, because they could no longer afford to sh to sort of you know waste money on paying rent on offices that no one is using so that sort of created opportunities for us as well and uh, we have some companies moved out of grid as well because they went 100 percent um remote no mm -hmm. these are working remotely and that is also sort of you know the shift that we noticed that is good for grid as well because the the change in tenants is is, is refreshing and it's good for networking um actually you said that uh, through the tools that you use like the online tools um you are able to attract members outside of uh, the physical space but also outside of tokyo mm -hmm. um which is great because I think a lot of co-working spaces are through COVID-19, they realized that their community could be way bigger uh, than just in their own locality. So uh, one of the questions that everyone is wondering now is like, how do you plan, so you and maybe everybody watching, like to keep managing both like the physical and virtual space uh, once the situation gets uh, better? Will uh, your community managers do both, or is there going to be a new role uh, created to, to manage those? Like, how do you plan it to work? Well, um, for the rest of this year, we're planning to keep our uh, events online. So we will uh, reopen our co working space um, with community managers working out of that space, but the events will continue to run online. Then, uh, starting next year, we will continue to do both run events in the physical space grid offline and broadcast them online as well so that mm, more people can participate we're planning to do both ah okay and um speaking of uh, reopening the physical space so you said it's going to happen on june 2nd right mm -hmm. and um so how will you change anything uh, in the physical space because of COVID-19? Um, like, what uh, what is your plan upon reopening? So we actually um, did all the changes this week already. Uh, we've reduced the number of seats, mm -hmm. and changed the layout on four floors. Um, oh wow! Im implement a new policy of disinfecting all the surfaces every two hours. We've hired um, a team of people um, in collaboration with NPO, um, people with disabilities, but those who still need work, they will come to greet and help um, disinfect the surfaces every few hours. What else did we do? Um, we're going to continue uh, offer free masks, uh, measure temperature at the reception, um, and uh, it's very popular now in Japan to sort of <laughs> put a transparent sheet. Ah, okay. But I, I'm, I'm still on, on the fence on this one. I really don't want to do that, but maybe we'll have to do that. I think yeah, the safety committee decides. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's uh, it feels that we were just talking about it with the speaker before. Uh, that some, somehow the perception can feel a bit more like cubicle-like by mm -hmm. putting everybody in like, even if it's transparent, there's still this enclosed. Um, but yeah, in people's head, if it brings them more safety, I guess it, it's a good thing. Well, we plan to maybe do that at the reception area, but not uh, in between people who work. We just um, reduce the number of seats so that they don't face each other. Mm -hmm. and that will reduce the risks of, you know, it, 
people infecting each other. And of course, yeah. everyone has to wear masks. Um, a seal in your rule, uh, you have to close the toilet seat in the toilet because apparently that's how the uh, infection can get spread. Basically, oh, when, wow, I didn't know. when you flush, you have to close the lid on the toilet. <laughs> I didn't know okay. that. <laughs> so, uh, um, and uh, also in terms of communication, because I think this is the big uh, question pending in the air for co-working operators on how to bring uh, people back uh, to the workplace. Yesterday, uh, we had quite a few speakers from Europe who were saying that at the moment, very few people are returning uh, to the workplace. And this morning, we, we had a call with Singapore um, and she was explaining that across Asia, they had around 95% of their members returning already. So it's, it's very different uh, from one country to, to another. Um, what is your take at GRID and what kind of communication are you doing towards the, the community to bring them back to the physical space? Well, uh, we're uh, operating a little bit differently from uh, your usual working space because it's free. We have no lack of demand from people. Yeah. <laughs> so we already have uh, our, our mailbox is full of requests from people to open sooner. <laughs> uh, I think we'll have no problem, uh, especially because you know, when you're stuck at home and you're single, you're basically alone all the time. And sometimes people join Remo or Discord or Zoom meetings just to hear other people sort of on the background mm. of their work. And so um, in Asia, that's that's the thing, you know, the loneliness. People <laughs> need a platform for communicating. And, and I think greed is that. So. Um, I think once we open, and we, we open earlier than the rest of the working spaces in Tokyo, I, I think there should be no problem with people returning. Yeah, that's uh, it's, it, this, this is for me a really interesting topic because um, it's so different uh, from one city even to another. It's not just, um, you know, like uh, big cities like, uh, I don't know, Berlin versus smaller cities. Uh, it's also very different. And I think the, the commuting uh, plays an important role. I don't know if uh, the members of GRID, they usually live around uh, where you uh, you are based. But I see that in, in Berlin, for instance, commuting is a big thing. Like people don't want to commute anymore. So that's that's also interesting. Well, um, um, uh, GRID is in the center of Tokyo. Many people can bicycle there. So mm. I guess that could be one of the reasons of people returning. <laughs> <laughs> And um, are you, as Gaiax and, and Grid as well, um, expecting a change in the workplace uh, culture and ways of working in Japan? Well, as I said earlier, we already started to notice this shift in um, some, some companies wanted to move to remote work, but didn't have sort of opportunity to do that. And now that this opportunity presented itself and they start to move and uh, they start to invest in um, cloud systems for people to work securely remotely. Um, they start to uh, sort of change the way they work. And yes, we noticed that shift uh, at GRID, as I said earlier, companies are moving into shared spaces because owing things has no benefit. Sharing things is, is good for, um, it's like a win-win situation for everyone. Um, and yes, uh, at Gaiax, as I said, everyone has a freedom to work wherever they want. But now it's almost like 90% people are working remotely. Gaiax mm -hmm. is supporting that, um, that financially as well, helping purchase office chairs, um, devices, uh, or if, if, if you want to stay home, uh, avoid commuting, you can use like your local co-working space and that can, could be, um, will be covered by company as well. So and uh, no, it's, it's uh, actually really interesting because earlier you mentioned that for you, for instance, it created uh, also some opportunities with larger companies to help them understand, for instance, how to run meetings in Zoom. So you guys take care of the entire operational part. Um, do you plan or how do you plan to expand this um, be it in the physical space or even uh, uh, on the online uh, place? Well, we are um, 
turning our great event spaces into YouTube recording studios. Wow, cool. To sort of um, have a space uh, to run their events, but without the participants, without the audience. So we'll, we'll uh, provide the space and the operational support for these sort of events. And we already have actually a, a high demand for that. So we're trying really hard right now to, to sort of create this uh, marketable package for them. Um, I have one last question. Uh, uh, how, um, which is more targeted to you uh, as, as a branding director, how do you um, envision your role uh, changing in the, in the coming months? Well, my team right now is really very focused on our online activities more than before. Now we provide a lot of support to new businesses born out of COVID situation. Uh, so for the foreseeable future, I think I guess we'll be helping create these marketable packages for these new services. But as a company, we need to continue to provide a free but safe public space for people to communicate. So our outreach will be focused on empowering that safe communication and making the best out of this sort of new normal situation. <laughs> yeah, the new normal, that's every, what everybody calls it. Um, I, I saw we had a comment uh, from, from some of the, the viewers uh, uh, and even a question. So would Gaiax expand internationally? We need this space in other countries too. <laughs> We'd, we'd like to. We're actually uh, looking for ways to expand in Tokyo, looking for interesting buildings to renovate into. Because we, we don't like the, the pretty new shiny places. We like old places with character, with history. We like to um, turn it into, uh, in Japan, we call it Boro um, Oshare, which is, um, I don't know how to say it in English. <laughs> uh, we like to DIY, basically. We like okay. to space not with the help of professional designers uh, but with the help from our community uh yeah i mean the one you have in in uh, nagata church it's, it's really awesome uh, and josh confirms it's a great space looking forward to visit you guys actually josh uh, who is commenting we also visited uh, their space uh, it's in Mumbai, and uh, they, they also have, in, it's called Ministry of New, and they have an incredible interior design. So if you ever go to Mumbai, Natalia, you should also visit Josh and his team. I'm sure you guys would uh, connect greatly together. Um, thank you so much, uh, Natalia, for, for sharing uh, with us all the opportunities that you guys uh, got out of COVID-19. Ah, we have one more question from Josh. Will you be creating a noise cancelling kind of space for these YouTube sessions or a more flexible construction? And would it involve only one person at a time or more? So uh, we actually are thinking of creating uh, several studios um, for two people talking, from two people talking to the whole event. Like we have um, space for 200 people uh, events so we'll we'll be transforming that into many different studios that can cater to many different events and yes we are planning to add noise cancelling panels on the We're talking to uh, when will those studios be available uh, we're trying really hard to to start that business soon um i guess maybe next month Okay, so because quite fast actually. Waiting for that, we need to to work ASAP. <laughs> and and you said actually, if I remember, like one of the companies that moved uh, into Gaiax, is it isn't it connected to YouTube in in a no. way? If I remember, okay. It's called App Bank. Uh, it's a YouTube company. Uh, it, it's crazy right now. It's great. There are like a bunch of YouTubers living there, basically shooting. <laughs> So we'll be collaborating with them. Uh, they will be providing the operational support for that business. And uh, if the viewers are interested to uh, see more about this, are you guys going to create any content on the topic or uh, are you guys going to do anything uh, that can be uh, visible somewhere? Yes, um, I'm adding that information to Gaix official website. And okay. that information will be added to the grid website as well. So okay, so anybody there. can have a look. Great. 
Um, yeah, once again, Natalia, thank you so much. Uh, if anybody is interested to connect with Natalia uh, in the participate participant kit you have received, uh, I added Natalia's uh, LinkedIn. Uh, you can connect with her uh, there if you want to. Um, and before I let you go, I would love to click a selfie. Uh, we have a, a, a real one together of the time we, we visited you, but because of this event, I can't make another one uh, next to you. So <laughs> I'm just gonna let you know when I click it. So are you ready? Three, two, <laughs> one. Perfect. Thank you so much, Natalia. I'm clapping on behalf of uh, everybody. We loved having you here. And uh, I really hope that uh, we can actually uh, see each other again in Tokyo, uh, either later this year or next year. I hope that as well. Thank you for having me. Take care. Bye, Natalia. Bye-bye.